tonight on Adventures with Alchemy, we have the Sura Showdown series. The Battle of Falernum comes to a head with the top 10 countdown. Let's do this. Aloha! Let's talk about Falernum. 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 Yes, very good. It comes from Barbados. It is a delicious spiced syrup that involves ginger, lime, clove, sometimes almond, depending on where you go and what you do and who you're with or whatever. So as you can see, there's many kinds and there's a lot more than this, believe me. We tried many, 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 many kinds and it came down to these 10. I originally wanted to do uh, five alcoholic and five non-alcoholic, but it just didn't work out that way and we're just gonna do the uh, top 10, one to 10. Um, referring back to that, Florinum comes in two ways. There is the syrup version with no alcohol it is more friendly towards non-alcoholic uh, cocktails, mocktails, if you will, but they are also very good in a regular cocktail. I know the bar I work at, we use non-alcoholic Falernum and it is fantastic. Uh, traditionally, it is made with alcohol for two reasons. Flavor, uh, and two is because of preservation. Alcohol preserves. Uh, now, the amount of alcohol varies from label to label and creator to creator. So. Uh, you'll see that some have more than others and the flavors will vary depending. So before we get started, I just want to say thank you to all the wonderful uh, companies that sent us Falernum. Uh, all of them pretty much sent us uh, a bottle for us to try, taste, uh, rate, and present them to you for your information and so that you can make an informed purchase. There will be links. Uh, in the description for you to click on and purchase any one of these lovely bottles. I suggest you try them all. They're fantastic. Each one of them are worth a try. And with that, my friends, let's get this bad boy going. Battle of the Falernums. Here we go. Top 10. So in order to fairly judge these syrups, we do a blind test and we rate them on five different categories. We have texture, profile, balance, aroma, and the cocktail test, also known as the sip test. We used corn and oil for this particular test. And yeah, went through a lot of Falernum. And here are the top 10. Let's do it. At number 10, we have Geiger Falernum. Now Geiger Falernum was very good, very heavy boozy though. It has a very strong boozy aftertaste. I found it to be a little thin, and um, but it has a very nice sweet tone to it. And it has a nice floral bouquet. Procyro. Beautiful consistency. Uh, this is very spice forward. It has a, uh, a, a very uh, nice clove taste to it and a nice spice taste to it, like from allspice. Um, I didn't get too much citrus there, almost none. And I found it to be very heavily sweet, but it is tasty and very delicious. If you want that toasty flavor, uh, toasty spicy flavor, this is the way to go. The cocktail experiment. Now, their aroma is fantastic. You open it up and you just get this wonderful floral notes and it's, it's lovely. Um, it has a nice citrus to almond balance. You can definitely taste both of those elements, but I did not get much of the spice elements as opposed to clove or allspice or anything like that. Uh, the consistency was nice and I like the unique label. Now, label doesn't really hold any weight in here, but I, I thought that it was very nice. I like the color and the consistency and it, I think that this score is fair. Moving on to number seven. Faye Brothers, well-known Falernum, very zesty and citrus forward, but it lacks spice. I definitely taste citrus. I definitely get that sweet and uh, sour flavor from it, but very almost none, uh, almost no spice at all. So, but it does have the perfect syrup consistency. And if it's, if you're doing some uh, mocktails, this is not a bad way to go. Number six, Simply Gala. Now Simply Gala is made by wonderful, passionate people. They have uh, many types of syrups, and their falernum is fantastic. It is definitely top 10 material. It has a nice nutty, spicy, and sweet flavor. 
I didn't get much citrus in there, but it is it is uh, very very balanced in those other elements. Now, it has a perfect consistency as opposed to syrup, and it's a perfect color. It looks homemade. You, you can you can't see through it. It looks like someone took you know fresh nuts and fresh uh, spices and and just you know made it at home. It looks great. Number five, the bitter truth. Now the bitter truth is known for their fantastic bitters that they make. Now their falernum is no different. It is delicious. It is a nice spicy. It has the citrus elements. It's got a nice color, um, but it, I found it to be a little thin. It, it's not quite all enough. And for that, I had to dock it a little bit. Um, again, we're kind of nitpicking here, but I have to have some sort of odor. I can't have all the falernums at number one and two and three, you know? So. Uh, bitter truth, amazing falernum. Definitely give it a shot. Number four, Tippleman's falernum, double spiced. Now remember that this is a double spiced falernum, so of course the clove and the allspice is definitely going to be more forward on this. Wonderful consistency. I would almost say it's perfect consistency. Beautiful color. Um, and I mean, what else can I say about this? This is a uh, extremely flavorful uh, falernum. And it is a wonderful alternative if you're using, uh, if you're looking for something without alcohol, okay? BG Reynolds. I call BG Reynolds and I consider BG Reynolds the king of non-alcoholic syrups as far as Falernum, Orja, and a few others. Uh, these guys know what they're doing. And when you taste it, yes, it is citrus forward, but you definitely taste the almond. You definitely taste the spices and all the flavors just pop and i mean pop like you it's just like zang each one hits you little by little and um you can use this it's so versatile you can use it in alcoholic cocktails you can use it in non-alcoholic cocktails um you get a, a a recipe on the back of every bottle it gives you a little something to start with and a little bit of an education on what it is you know they i i give my hats off and salute those guys they're really really good at what they do and they work really hard to make it happen and yeah so Number three, BG Reynolds. There you have it. And number two, Maggie's Farm. Now, I cannot say enough about Maggie's Farm. Maggie's Farm is, it blew my mind. This was my first time trying Maggie's Farm and I fell in love with it. It is a lime forward falernum that has definitely wonderful ginger, almond, and spice flavors in there. You can taste everything. All the flavors just pop at you with a wonderful zang. And uh, yeah, the, I love the label. Again, I say the label holds no weight, but I, I, you know, it does a little bit, just slightly, because you know, you look at Maggie's Farm and you see their label, and it tells you exactly what you're getting. You know, so a lot of people don't know what Florida is. So when you're looking for it, you find it, boom, you, 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 so you know exactly what it is just by looking at the label. Okay. So yes, Maggie's Farm worthy of being number two. It's worthy of being number one, but unfortunately, there can only be one king, and that king is. Velvet Falernum. John Taylor's Velvet Falernum. It is the most balanced of all the Falernums. It is also the father of the Falernums. Uh, definitely extra credit because if it wasn't for them, most of these other ones probably wouldn't be here. They opened the door for commercial Falernum. Um, it is a beautifully balanced Falernum. You, when it comes to the sipping test, I don't believe any other one, any other Falernum even comes close. Velvet, you taste all the ingredients, plus it has a nice silky after mouth feel, which is why a lot of people, I think that's where the name Velvet may come from. I'm not 100% sure. But yes, Velvet Falernum is king, John Taylor. And if you have a chance, this is definitely one that belongs in your bar. Uh, get out there, try all these Falernums. They're all fantastic. But yes, and of course, above number one, now, you know what I'm gonna say. The best syrup is the one you make at home. So, for those of you that have always wanted to know how to make falernum, like me, this is your chance to learn. This is a tutorial and a very simple one, okay? This isn't gospel. Don't take this recipe as the only way to make falernum. I learned that there are many ways to make falernum and just use this as a very simple, basic template, okay? Uh, they, again, you can make it with alcohol, you can do it without alcohol. Um, it's completely up to you. This is just kind of uh, a, a mixture of different recipes that I learned. Okay, mise en place time. So, 
you go. I have four and a half ounces of roasted almonds. Just get some regular almonds and roast them in your oven. Doesn't take very long. Keep an eye on them though, because they do roast quickly. You don't want to burn them. Remember, brown. Next, we have five limes zested, and you want to zest them. Do not get any of the white pith in there. Just get the green off, put it in your cup, and move on. And by the way, do it quickly, because these, the lime and the ginger oxidize quick, which means they turn brown, for those of you that don't know what that means. Ginger, one and a half ounces. Just julienne them. This is all gonna be for infusion, okay? So it doesn't have to be pretty. 30 cloves and a quarter teaspoon of allspice. Four ounces of high proof rum. Ray and Nephew is what I recommend. If you don't have Ray and Nephew, just find some high proof rum and do the best you can, okay? Get your quick whip or your whipping canister. Open that bad boy up. The other way to do this is to get all your ingredients and put it in a jar and let it sit in the jar for 24 hours. We're gonna do that in three hours in the quick bar. okay? Okay, now that we have all our ingredients in our whipping canister, we are gonna add our rum, and then we're gonna add two chargers to it. We're gonna use nitrogen, so yeah. We're trying to get this thing to infuse quickly. Now, also remember another thing. The higher the proof of your alcohol, the deeper and stronger your infusion. So if you have a super high proof spirit, then it's gonna literally pull that flavor out a lot more than if you were just to have a regular 40%. Yeah. Just something to think about. And by the way, once again, these are brought to you by our friends at Quick Whip. And we want to say thank you to Quick Whip. Good quality stuff. Now, we're just going to let it sit for about three to four hours, and we'll get right back to you with the next step. Okay, so decided to leave this in for about 12 hours. I mean, I wanted to make sure that flavor was just in there, you know what I mean? So, um, after 12 hours and straining it out, which. <laughs> Careful. Uh, after straining it out with cheesecloth, um, basically this is what you get. About 100 milliliters. Remember we had uh, our uh, lime zest, we had our four ounces of high proof uh, booze, and um, yeah, so this is what you get. Look at that color. Can't see through it. It's a nice, beautiful, beautiful scent of roasted almonds and citrus and, and cloves, but it's not overwhelming. Everything has a nice balance, you know? Now, we're gonna make some simple syrup here. I'm just gonna make a standard uh, one cup to one cup of uh, simple syrup. And then I'm gonna take some of the simple syrup, about half of that, and I'm gonna mix it in with this bad boy and then we're gonna add some lime. So let's start by making our simple syrup. So heat up our water, wait till it comes to a nice simmer, add our sugar, Stir it until it turns clear and it's nicely cooked, and then we're gonna reduce until it becomes a la nap. Remember, a la nap coats the back of a spoon, keeps running. Okay, so we have our 100 milliliters of flavory goodness. We have our slightly over a cup of simple syrup. We have our bottle of lime juice. So we're gonna do one tablespoon and one teaspoon of lime juice. Remember, this is a small batch, okay? If you were gonna make a big batch, like a whole bottle's worth, then you would wanna double this, this recipe up, okay? Now, we're gonna do two thirds simple syrup, two thirds of a cup of simple syrup, and we're just gonna put it on in there, okay? We're just gonna go air it all in in here. Stir well. Check your frequency. Oh yeah. Now, again, this is a very basic recipe. You can do so many different things. Remember that Ray Nephew is strong. So play around with the, with the ingredients. Make small batches so that if you make a mistake or if something comes out too spicy or too 
uh, too almond forward or too citrusy that you can play with that and you can make the adjustments that are necessary to your liking, okay? Um, I'm gonna bottle this up and keep it because I'm pretty happy with the results. Uh, please enjoy, take your time, and uh, leave some comments, hit that like and subscribe button, please, and I will be happy to interact with you in the comment section, okay? So, when we're talking about falernum and cocktails, we have to talk about corn and oil. Corn and oil was born in Barbados, just like falernum, and they're synonymous with each other. You have to have falernum to have a corn and oil. The reason why it's called corn and oil is because traditionally blackstrap rum is used, which looks like crude oil. And I'm guessing falernum looks like corn oil? I, I don't know. All I found out was about the blackstrap part. So, um, but that being said, Bayesian rum, uh, aged blade Bayesian rum is also used. Uh, one well-known version is uh, Mr. Martin Kate from Smuggler's Cove. In his book and his bar, they have a corn and oil recipe in which they use a, a aged rum from Barbados. So, um, and it is fantastic. So, it is a combination of like an old-fashioned with a sour. Um, it is just, it's a fantastic drink and it's very simple. Um, it calls for lime, it calls for Angostura bitters, it calls for rum, but most importantly, it calls for falernum. It is usually a two to one ratio of rum to falernum. If you want it sweeter, you could do a, uh, you could reverse that, falernum and rum, so. And traditionally, if, well, I don't wanna say traditionally, if we're talking about straight using products from Barbados, then you would be using John Taylor Velvet Falernum because this is, comes from Barbados itself. That doesn't mean you have to use these exact ingredients. You can use variations of them. If you have a favorite falernum, use that falernum. If you have a different type of rum that you prefer or have, or a better rum, use it, you know? Um, black strap, you can, a lot of people like to do um, a float of black strap on the top. That is fantastic. There's lots of ways to make this drink. There's no one way. Um, but I, one thing to follow is ratio. So it's good to learn at least a couple ways, but one way at least is a template. And this is, uh, I always offer these recipes as a template, it is not gospel. And uh, I highly encourage you to go out there and explore different rums, different falernums, and I just gave you 10 of them to look at right there. So, hey, let's get started, okay? Again, I have seen recipes that say, pour it over the ice, and I have seen recipes say, put the ice in last. I am going to pour all the ingredients in the glass, and then I'm going to put in the ice and stir, like an old-fashioned, sort of. So, let's begin with our, um, non-alcoholic ingredients. In this case, once again, some say squeeze the lime in, some say pour the lime, some have no lime ingredients at all, but hey, they all have at least a twist of lime in there or a lime garnish, so let's start with a half an ounce of lime juice, four dashes of bitters, one ounce of velvet falernum, I'm gonna go two ounces of rum. This is a aged rum from Barbados made by Plantation. So get yourself a nice piece of ice and you want to stir until the glass gets frosty on the outside. Now some like to top it off with crushed ice like I said before and top it off with a little black strap. I'm going to just stick to the old school way and just add my ingredients. Stir real good. Then of course we have our lime wedge. And that's it, my friends. Corn and oil, falernum, rum, a little citrus, splash, a couple of dashes of ango. You are good to go, cheers. That is lovely.